Uh, it's time for Media Watch now. Emerald Maxwell is here with us in the studio. Hi there, Emerald. Hi. And you've been looking at some of the reaction online to uh, the strikes here in France for a fifth straight day. Lots of uh, travel misery for people around the country. Yes, and uh, yet again, it beats this morning, uh, Paris beat another record for traffic uh, with more than 500 kilometres of traffic uh, around the capital as people are struggling to get in to work. Um, with almost all public transport down, this Twitter user says, Google suggested it might be quicker to walk from... Uh, a city 120 kilometres from Paris, oh. to Paris, uh, see you in 25 hours. In the rain as well. In the rain as well, yeah. didn't Orange. help. Um, so, but yet 68% of people, of uh, French people who regularly use public transport are still uh, apparently in favour of the, the strike movement against pension reform, um, according to a poll published this morning. Um, and why? Well, this is this French economist. Uh, he says in Sweden, uh, they've moved to this points based system that Macron is um, advocating. And it, it turns out that 92 percent of women and 72 percent of men ended up with uh, a smaller pension. Um, so that sort of reflects what a lot of people, uh, French people, are feeling still. That's what they're worried about. Um, but uh, it's 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 basically it's it's a big make or break week for the government um, and didn't really start very well because uh, today Le Parisien revealed that one of the people in charge of the pension reforms, Jean-Paul Delevoye, has, um, he apparently forgot to mention that to declare his links with the insurance world when he submitted a, a, a statement of interest this weekend. Um, and so he's, he's the high commissioner for pensions, so he has a big say in this uh, reform. And so he says it was an oversight, but a lot of people, a lot of politicians on the, both the left and the right um, say that's not good enough, uh, and wow. it's a major conflict of interest. Um, they're asking him to step down. He's stepped down from his role in this, um, in this, uh, it's an insurance training institute, but politicians are asking, yeah, it's calling him to step down from government. Um, here we have a leader of the French Communist Party, Fabien Roussel, sorry, he's a national secretary. Um, and he says, in reality, the entire Macron reform provides for the delivery of our pensions to insurance companies and pension funds. Um, and on the right, you have this, uh, he's Nicolas Dupont-Aignan, he's the leader of the right-wing Debout la France party, and he also is calling for Delevoye's resignation because he says such a serious conflict of interest means he, he no longer should have a role in not, these reforms. Not the headlines the government was hoping for at all as it tries to deliver this tricky reform. Uh, let's no. move on to uh, Finland, uh, a bit more of a positive news story. Yes. Uh, there, uh, Sanna Marin uh, is set to become the world's youngest prime minister. That's right. Um, the world's youngest. She's also heading up a coalition government of five parties which are, who are all led by women. And you can see here in this picture, um, this, this was posted by a former um, Finnish Prime Minister. And most of them in their 30s. Exactly. They're all under, well, bar one, they're all under yeah. 35. Um, and uh, so Alexander Stubb, he's a former uh, F uh, Finnish Prime Minister, says that it really shows that Finland is a modern and progressive country. Um, and indeed, it's a country that does do well when it comes to women's representation. Uh, the Finnish uh, Parliament on their website says that women now make up 47% of Parliament. Um, and so it's, it's, it, it's, it is a country that does performs well on this. Um, but on, what, another thing that distinguishes uh, this new prime minister, Sanna Marin, is that she has two mums. Um, she's the she was brought up by two uh, same sex parents, mm -hmm. um, but they I mean they seemingly have provided good female role models. Uh, Absolutely. For her. Um, and but she says that she never it, she never thought about her age or her gender, and it was actually her political ethos. Um, that's gained her the support of her of her party members. 34 years old, not bad. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Pretty good CV <laughs> already. And uh, not so great for women over in the United States. Uh, this is kind of the precursor to the Oscars, isn't it? The Golden Globes that's has right. uh, announced its list of nominations. Not many women in the lineup, though. No. Um, last year, uh, Natalie Portman called them out um, when she announced uh, the what did she say? She said the all male nominees. The all male nominees for the list of directors for, right? for best director. Um, and this year they haven't done any better. Um, in fact, there's been uh, there's been so no female directors nominated, no female screenwriters, and no film directed by a woman in the Best Picture race. Um, so it's a it's, it's also a year where many, um, including uh, these journal this journalist in the Daily Beast, um, says it should have been a good year for women. women uh, lo a lot of uh, really uh, major war war contenders that people thought would be appearing. Um, directed by women have been snubbed, including Greta Gerwig's uh, Little Women and Lulu Wang's The Farewell. 
So there's been a lot of criticism um, of their decision to snub them. Um, here yeah, we have... it's not like they couldn't find any. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so this this uh, this Twitter user, he's a writer and director. He calls them out on it. He says they were all snubbed. Don't let, don't tell me this business is fair. And we're talking um, about just nominated, aren't we? Just getting the name on the list, not winning the award. Exactly, and that's, that's exactly what um, the LA Times says. It's um, it says throughout its 75-year history, women have been nominated for Best Director at the Globes only seven times, um, and they've actually who Barbara Streisand is the only woman who's ever won. And that was back in 1984. Um, and the last female director was nominated in 2015. So it is quite a poor show. Um, and so it's a lot of, again, also another thing that they haven't done very well on is, uh, it's also, it's again, very, very white. So this user calling mm -hmm. them out on, it might be the whitest I've seen the Golden Globes in years. Um, so a lot of people are saying that they should be doing better. The Daily Dot blames the selection yeah, committee. Yeah, Ava DuVernay, she didn't make it either. Yeah, exactly. So that was a big um, oversight. So my personal opinion. <laughs> um, so sh yeah, so basically, uh, there's a lot of criticism about the selection committee. It's called the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, and the Daily Dot uh, says, "Whoever you are, you need to do better." It's 2019. It's about time. They don't seem to be able to get it right. It's not like they haven't had fair warning, is it? All right, Emerald, thank you very much indeed. Emerald Maxwell there with Media Watch. We're taking a short break. Don't go away. This is France 24.